Hello, my dear friends. Welcome or welcome back. Today I have a short review for you. I really think it's gonna be short because I only have one candle and it is from Kringle. The candle in question is Tea Time. Look how stunning that label is. Yes. Now this is a medium. So the large one has the same label, but it actually shows a little bit more of the painting. Here's a picture of it. <laughs> Um, really, really beautiful. And there is also a three wick all soy, like one of those painted wraparounds, whatever. Looks like this, which is also really, really cute. This is actually one of the few painted wraparounds that while it is different from the aesthetic of the label, I can get behind it. It is like completely unique, but it still has that like British element to it. It's cute without being like tacky or looking like it comes from like Claire's or Limited 2. Um, so I really like it. It's, it's a strong aesthetic. And I also think three wicks, you have a really good chance of good strength and throw. It's all 100% soy. So um, that's good. I probably got this in a sale. It's a, a medium jar and I really do love Big Ben and like that painting is just so beautiful. Um, so I went ahead with this. I do like their two wicks. I prefer the medium ones to the large ones. And partly that's because, I mean, I burn so many candles and I have so many candles that when it's that really big one, it takes me so long to get through one of those big ones. Do you know that I have drawers full of especially reserved candles that are like half burned? Because it's just, it takes so long and I wanna move on to something else. And it is really satisfying to be able to burn a candle all the way down to the wick clips, which this one did. I don't know, there have been some whispers that the medium jar may be going away, and I really hope that's not the case, because this is definitely the best size for me. The country one's the same way. I like those shorter ones. Um, I also think that they, with the shorter, they give you less of a potential for problems, for puny wicks, for sooting, for all kinds of different things. For the same reason that I like to buy smaller cereal boxes, I don't have a family of six, like the chances for that cereal or those like crackers to go stale and the amount of time that it'll take me to get through it, very high. I would like a smaller one that I can get through and it stay fresh. Same principle for these Kringle candles that already burn quite long, unless you're getting like a three wick. Um, so yeah, wick clips all the way down. Yes, there's some residue here, but it's just um, the way that soy burns and no sooting burn like a dream. I, I don't know what else to say. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, I've been burning this now. <laughs> Yesterday was so cold and rainy and gloomy, and it probably would have been the day to record this video. Today we have sun, albeit it is a little bit chilly, um, but still fine for tea time. So the notes on this one, I, by the way, this came out in the spring of this year. Um, and it was, a, it was a decent spring release. It was creative, it was fairly diverse. Um, there were a lot of beachy scents in it, but this was definitely one of the ones that was not. And it was a standout. Um, I, I thought about, like when I was thinking, like what best new candles for Kringle can I nominate? And I really struggled until, thank God, we got to hallowed ground for this fall, which I know you guys are sick of me talking about. Um, but the, one, the only one that I could think of that was possibly a nominee was this one, which was Tea Time. I thought that it was creative. I thought that it was something new and I thought it was a really nice tea scent. Um, I don't know that it's innovative enough or mind blowing enough for it to really be a truly best new candle, but it's at least an honorable mention. Okay. Um, and I, I don't know if I'm terribly keen on how this year has gone for Kringle. So um, this has been ushered into the top realm. In a stronger year, it would have been fine. I don't know that it would be a standout. Okay, so top notes for tea time. Clove bud, zesty orange, cardamom. Um, mid notes, star anise, steeped tea leaves, and it is black tea leaves, not green or white or anything like that and cinnamon, 
And then base notes, sandalwood and golden honey. Maybe. <laughs> I'm not getting a whole lot of honey. Maybe some sandalwood, maybe some like woodiness, but I would say does not take away from the fact that this is a really a pretty pure, authentic black tea kind of scent for sure. It's a lot of black tea and it is spices. I would say predominantly clove, predominantly clove, cinnamon, and yes, something citrusy. Um, I don't know that it is strong enough of a citrus to be identifiably orange as opposed to lemon, say. And there is a very dried kind of dimension to it, which is apropos given that it's a tea. Um, and that, yeah. Um, but it, this has zesty orange, so maybe they are trying to go for something that is a little bit more fresh. Um, but I would say that it smells dry to me, as in a, a, a tea blend that actually has some dried citrus in it. And I've said, many people have said that this um, reminds me a lot of a very cult favorite um, tea from the tea company Bigelow. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and the tea in question is constant comment. And here's a picture of what that looks like. If you have not tried this, I really recommend that you do. Constant comment, they don't, the, the company has been doing, it's a proprietary blend for Bigelow. They've been doing it for decades and um, they don't tell exactly what is in it, but they say that it has um, orange rind, black tea and spices. And the spices that they showed on the website were definitely clove and then something which looked like maybe a cinnamon nutmeg mix. So I would imagine or allspice or something like that. So um, definitely, basically the, the fragrances that are here. Um, this also adds, um, Kringle is adding here cardamom and star anise, um, which would take it in a much more chai tea direction. We've had conversations about Kringle and chai. I don't think that they have a really good chai candle, although they've come out with various different um, candle candles that allegedly <laughs> have chai in them. But I, for my nose, I don't think that they have a good true chai candle. A truly like Indian authentic chai candle or chai drink would have a ton of ginger and cardamom in it and anise. Um, so. If there's cardamom and anise in here, they're definitely supporting cast. I would say it's primarily clove bud um, with some dried orange, perhaps some cinnamon for warmth, and a lot of black tea. I think Constant Comment from Bigelow has a little bit more spice than is in this candle. So for me, this candle is a strong black tea, with some spices. Whereas like Constant Common is a true like spicy black tea. And the longer that you steep it, then like the black tea almost gets like overwhelmed by all of those spices, which is amazing. Um, so for me, this one is more of a black tea with spices along the lines of like that lemon black tea candle from Bath and Body Works. I can't remember what it's called. Sweet tea and lemon or who knows what else. Along those lines, but obviously with those warming spices um, as opposed to just a really strong lemon note. And the citrus in here is less discernibly lemon. It's supposed to be orange, but I can't say it's like discernibly orange either. I thought it was good. For me, it's kind of a one and done because I did discover <laughs> that I don't know that I love my house smelling like tea. It's just as simple as that. Um, every now and then I'll drink tea, but I'm definitely more of a coffee drinker. I love coffee. And frankly, I love it when my house smells like coffee, just the way that you love walking into a coffee house and just smelling all those amazing roasted beans, yeah? I'm a coffee girl. I wouldn't mind a strong coffee um, scent in my house. Strong tea scent kind of weirded me out. Um, there is also another candle from Kringle that precedes this that I think is called herbal tea, maybe. I'm going to look it up. Here's a picture of it. Um, and this is a real popular one amongst Kringle folks. Um, and I only had a daylight of it that I burned and man, it weirded me out so much. 
it was like medicinal. It was all the things that herbal tea is. It's super authentic and it's actually a little bit bolder than this one in terms of strength and throw, at least from what I could tell from that daylight. Um, and it's got a real following for sure. That one was even more weird to me than this one. So I can just tell it's, it's not my thing. I am not like a, a tea fragrance kind of person. I'm not even really much of a tea drinker. However, I do like constant comment every now and then. This reminds me of it. And I think it's a really solid candle and one that a lot of you either like or would like. So I can recommend it. It did come out in the spring um, period, which a lot of people questioned because with those warming spices that we tend to associate with very cool weather and specifically the fall season with like the cinnamon, with the clove, etc. cetera, um, there were questions as to whether or not why this came out in, um, f in spring as opposed to fall. And I've talked about that some too. Um, I kind of like it in March because I do think that March, at least for many of us, is very, very cold and very dreary. Um, and many of us are drinking tea for that um, May period. Also, the tie-in here is to England. Of course, England is a huge tea um, kind of culture, um, but the days in London are often very rainy at all times in the season and can be very cold as well. And I do think that if maybe as lovely as this label is, if they had gone with like a rainy London day, you know, with all the umbrellas in the street um, and a little bit darker, then I think it would be much more of a like March rain kind of candle. So I had no problem with it coming out in the spring, but I burned it here in the fall and it is an absolutely great burn in the fall as well. So if you've got tea time, this would be a great time to bring it out. It's a little bit of a contrast from all of the traditional apple, pumpkin, smoke kind of candles. This one might be exactly what it is that you want, especially on a day like it was here yesterday, cold, dark, and dreary. The performance on this one, I wanna say that the strength and throw for me was kind of in the six to seven and a half range, maybe. Um, I think it was closer to seven. And I do think that while the throw was quite strong and impressive, it was a very thin kind of fragrance. So it didn't compete particularly well with other candles. If there were other candles in the house, whatever it was would tend to best it. So I would say that it's a fairly thin fragrance, which is a little surprising given how strong like the clove is in it, because clove and cinnamon tend to amplify pretty well. Um, so in that sense, it was decent. It was a decent candle and for the spring release and frankly for the releases of most candles here um, for Kringle this year, six to 7.5 is actually on the higher end. Although for me, it's just kind of decent. And I do think that it was mostly in the 6.5 and 7 range, although there were a couple burns that seemed more than that. So I can recommend it. And if you're one of those people that loves a tea fragrance, loved that herbal tea, for instance, um, this would be a really beautiful one to add to your collection. And I recommend it highly in that three wick too, which kind of has a very, even with the drab brown look of it, it just kind of has a very like, seasonal, cozy kind of feel to it. Um, and that's great with those warming spices and, you know, cooler weather in the fall. So there you have it. Tea time, Pringle. Fine, fine. Doesn't blow my mind, but these are great, like, I would say they're like mid-tier releases, you know? Because when you have a release, you should have candles that are in that really high, like, this is brilliant, this is like life-changing, this is incredible, etc. And you've got some misses on the bottom, but you really do need like a strong, like, middle tier of candles that are not like mind-blowing, but they're decent and they're creative and they give variety and depth to your release, so. This is definitely one of those mid-level performers that we'll probably have in the catalog for another year or two at least. There you go. Check it out, my friends. Wait for a sale. Use a brand ambassador discount. And I'll see you in the next one.